What do you mean the store is closed? It's Saturday. I mean, that's what I said. Like, indefinitely? <laughs> Calm your tits. We're just remodeling the place. We're gonna have a whole new store. All right, smartass. What am I supposed to do until then? I don't know. Why don't you play one of the games you already have in your huge collection of games you don't play? Uh, I'm getting around to it. Anyway, we're in a mad dash to finish this, so don't worry. Did you say... Mad Dash? <laughs> mad Dash was a game released on the original Xbox Hello? back in November of 2000. Eh. Something ain't right with that guy. Mad Dash Racing was one of 19 launch title games for the original Xbox back in 2001. Oh, ho, ho, ho. remember when video game consoles had more than two titles at launch? Yeah, me neither. Developed by Crystal Dynamics and published by EDOS Interactive, Mad Dash is a racing game that one could easily compare to Sonic R. As in, the racing aspect has your character physically running rather than racing in some sort of vehicle. But whereas Sonic R is terrible, Mad Dash Racing is... eh, it's alright. And the game features Billy West as the voice actor for all of the characters, and if you don't know him by name, he does the voices for Ren and Stimpy, Doug Funny, Fry from Futurama, and a ton more. Mad Dash takes place on an island where a wizard named Hex plus to take over the world using red meteor chunks. And for some unexplained reason, he can't obtain these chunks himself, so he hosts an event where contestants race against one another to find them for him. The racers have no clue why Hex wants to gather these for himself, so he promises the winner a pig and his magic scepter for anyone who brings him all of the shards. And here is where our game begins. And since this is a launch title game, I figured it would only be appropriate to use the Duke Controller. Yeah. Ah, I haven't used a Duke controller in a long time, and holding this just feels so good. <laughs> Every playable racer is split into different classes, bashers, dashers, and gliders. Bashers are able to break through environmental objects, dashers can run up steep hills, and gliders can obviously swim really fast. And throughout playing the game, you'll get to pick a total of three characters as your main team. The way the tracks are set up are insane. Instead of doing multiple laps around a short track, this game has you going in one long continuous track with multiple routes that you can take, secret passageways to open, and shortcuts to be found. And depending on what class your racer is will benefit you in certain routes throughout each map. All right, so for a racing game, there is a lot to unpack here. The game's not very long, but everything in the levels is just kind of packed tight with a bunch of different things that you can do. Since each race is one continuous track, it takes about four or five minutes to complete one race. But there are some downsides to this rather than doing short laps. You have to place first in every single match, because if you don't, you'll lose and have to start the match all the way over again, which wouldn't be that big of a deal if the races weren't a minimum of four to five minutes long, but you have to do everything in this race precise or else you'll lose. The rubber banding in this game is a fucking anomaly. You could be doing great the entire match, not miss one thing, and if you get hit once, you'll be in fourth place just like that. And once that AI character gets in first place, it's really fucking hard to get that position back. <laughs> And it's not just running that you're going to be doing in every stage. There's environmental obstacles that you have to go through as well. And you can go through these by performing the joystick in the palm rotation. And after a while, your palm and thumb starts to hurt. I was getting Mario Party 64 flashbacks. Ah! And what kind of early 2000s video game would this be if it didn't have grinding? That's right, you're able to grind on a bunch of different things within each level that helps you get through tedious parts of the track. And there's even mid-air stunts that you can perform by holding the X button and twirling the joystick. If you perform one of these stunts successfully, you'll be rewarded with energy for your juice bar. Every character has their special ability, and this juice bar will allow you to use that. Another type of power-up that you can find throughout the levels are these green meteor chunks. If you collect 10 of these chunks, you'll turn into a tribrid, which allows you to use all three of the class abilities. But just like the coins in Mario Kart, if you get hit by a projectile or fall off the map, you'll lose all of your chunks and have to regain them again. And of course, since it's a kart racer-esque type of game, there are other power-ups that you can get. Some interesting ones are a guided chicken missile, a disco ball barrier, which makes you invincible and allows you to run really fast, kind of like the star in Mario Kart. 
And one of my other favorites is Freeze All. This freezes everyone on the map, and you actually have to perform a little button combo in order to break free of the ice. Honestly, aside from the chicken missile, the other projectile power-ups kind of suck, so I just don't care to use them. The best part of this game is the racing, as it should be. It just feels really good to run and go really fast, jumping from, you know, point to point, going through secret passages, and not in a vehicle just makes it, I don't know, more satisfying for some reason. There are a total of nine stages, each one vastly different than the next, with two of those being boss races. The first one, you're racing against Hex's henchmen. Here, your main objective is to stay ahead of him and set off traps to deal damage. Once you learn the track and the best way to traverse through it, he's really easy to defeat. The last and final race is against Hex, the little tiny wizard man with horns. For this stage, you have to make it to his super mega doomsday weapon before he does. You have to damage the towers that hold the meteor chunks in place. This will cause Hex to run and repair the tower, allowing you to strike him. At first, I wasn't really sure what to do. I got to the crystals and I broke the towers, but he would just fix them again. I didn't realize that I had to attack him. So once I figured that out, it was rinse and repeat and boom, I won. And just like the super generic plot of this game, the ending of it is just as generic, leaving you hints to a sequel that will never exist. And by hints, I mean Hex says, I'll be back. <coughs> but there's not a Mad Dash Racing 2, so I guess he never came back. And that's pretty much it for this game. There are other modes that you can play, such as cash mode, whatever that is, I never tried it. There's time trial mode, and there's also stunt mode. And there's also unlockable characters that you can get. You can even unlock that lizard, Gex. Yeah, when's the last time you played a Gex game? Overall, I really enjoyed playing this game. It does have some problems. The difficulty level, for example, even on easy mode, I was struggling to get first place in some of the later matches. The environmental obstacles I could probably live without, mainly just because it's doing this and I don't know, it slows the game down in my opinion. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention one of the coolest parts about this game, the soundtrack. Yeah, the soundtrack for this game features licensed music by Moby, Fatboy Slim, Crystal Method, and many more. I'm all about that early 2000s techno aesthetic. I fucking love that shit. And that is Mad Dash Racing for the original Xbox, a launch title game and not a bad one in my opinion. If you can find yourself a copy of this game, I highly recommend you pick it up because it's a super fun co-op racing game as well. And that's going to do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell because I do content like this every week so there's always something to watch. Go check me out on social media. Links are down below in the video description and I will see you guys next time when I cover another game that was only on Xbox.